But what I want you to start thinking about, not only playing, this song's in E major, by the way, but there's spots where we can use E minor as well. And there's also a couple of chords in this progression that normally are minor chords that are major chords in this particular progression. Now what that does is it gives us an option of one note difference. So we can add that note in there to make it sound extra cool or we can just rely on the other two notes of the chord as they go by. But the main thing I want you to think about is not only by this time we probably know our pentatonic positions, all five of them. If you don't, I highly recommend you memorize all of them. And the next step beyond that is learning different inversions of your chords. So say our progression, or the progression does go like this, it's E major. The next chord that it goes to is G sharp major. Then you go straight down to C sharp minor. And then to F sharp major. Now the G sharp here and F sharp here, those are usually minor chords in an E major progression. So they give us a really cool note. That third is raised, right? So instead of this, we have. So if we target this note right here, awesome. Okay, so from there, it's like a one, four, five. We got B, A, and E. Okay, so. I mean by different inversions of the chord is I try to know at least three inversions of each chord. Now I do that by memorizing particular shapes of chords. So if you've ever heard of the caged method, it's awesome. It teaches you all the chords up and down the neck, relating them to open position chords. And what I mean by that is this would be an E shaped chord, C, A, D. And what they do is they move these particular shapes to different spots on the neck to get those same chords. So say I wanted an E chord in an E position or an E shape, well I got it right here. But if I wanted that in an A shape, keep in mind what an A chord looks like, I would have to scoot it up this A chord, right? I would slide it up to here and my first finger would become what the zero fret is right here. But now since I have a note right here on the top, or the root note, that A shape becomes an E chord. Same thing if I took this D chord and slid it up a whole step. The next after D is E. So if I slid this whole shape up and played the bottom three strings, this is also an E chord. Okay, so I have E, E, E. Now the reason that is important is because each of those chord shapes falls in a different E major pentatonic position. And what you can do is you can learn where the target notes are in each one of those positions by knowing where those inversions fall in each of those pentatonic positions, right? So let me give you an example. This D shape, right, our, our chord goes So here is one of the, the shapes for E. The next place is here. That's my next chord, right? It would be this chord. The next one's up here. These are all the D-shaped versions of my chord progression. the D shape especially, you do a lot of the soloing on the G, B, and E strings. So let me show you where this comes into effect. So if we start from the beginning. Okay, now what I did right there, there's my E chord. So by 
sliding in. I My first slide was that note on the E chord right there. I slid into it. That note right there is also in that E chord. So as that E chord went by, I hit two of the notes in the chord. Okay, now the next chord we get to is this one. And what I did was I bent up to it. One of the notes in... Okay, so I knew those two inversions, those two chords in a different inversion, and I could see in my pentatonic positions how I could get there. So we got... Right, so I targeted that note. Now it's the same thing, the next chord would be here. And then I gotta come back down here. Now that's just knowing one shape, the D shape of those chords. If I knew A and E shapes of those chords as well, then all of a sudden the whole neck opens up and you're thinking more chords rather than just shapes. The, the pentatonic box is a great map, right? The chord shapes themselves are more the destination, right? So that's the map to get there. That's the road we're following. But the actual destination we want to get to are those chord shapes within that map or those destinations within our map, right? So. <laughs> Same thing there, when I came back to the turnaround, I came back and now I played out of this E shape. Okay, my first position is right there. So I was targeting notes right there. Well, this chord is right here. So when I bent up, I'm actually hitting another note right out of that chord. So. What we want to do is learn the different inversions or shapes of the chords in our progression. If you know the E shape, the A shape, and the D shape, you're going to be a completely different player because you're going to see the actual chords. You can do your riffs, you can even make fast riffs, but at least you'll know where the chords are in those you know, pentatonic positions that you're using, and you'll you'll be able to see where to target those notes. Right? And you'll be able to hit them as the music goes by. Now, you remember, if you learn those three shapes, then obviously, you know, the distance between inversions, right? So here, that's one of my E's. Our next chord's here. I'm gonna stick with that same shape, both those A shapes. I'm playing out of that. Right, our next one's a D shape. And I'm gonna come back to an E shape of this chord for our next chord. But that's right in position one again. So we've only gone through two positions and we've hit a majority of the chords in our progression. So learn those shapes. The E shape of each chord, the A shape, and the D shape, and then apply that to what you already know, your riffs. All right? And so on and so forth. I just did the A and the D shapes right there, and that was over an E chord. So play out of chords, not only thinking scales, but think chords over the top of that as well. And those are the target notes that you are desperately searching for. Do it now. It took me years and years and years. I mean, just until recently before I really started concentrating on that. And when I did, it made a humongous difference. So food for thought, try that out. I hope you enjoy these jam tracks. You got four of them. 
I will be putting out a little video on each, a couple little tidbits. The 100 Licks DVD will just dive deep into all of those songs and give you a bunch of licks per song, plus a whole other way to combine major and minor pentatonic in the beginning.